Hey, it's Spence from LaunchFlows.com. In this video, I'd like to review the five methods for selling with LaunchFlows. LaunchFlows provides many unique methods to offer products for sale, whether in your step-by-step -step sales funnels or your single page checkouts. You can easily mix and match to create new and creative results for your business. Now, the five methods I'm gonna to touch on here and expand upon from our documentation. They're, they are the direct checkout link, the simple product bump, the variable product bump, always in checkout, or the instant sales page. You can use any of these methods by way of a short code or using the Elementor widgets. This means you can use it with any of your favorite page builders and you can use it with the Classic or the Gutenberg. Let's start with the direct checkout link. This is the core method that we use whenever you're setting up a product. If one were to go inside of a product, whether it be simple or variable, and go down to the Launch Flows tab, you can configure all of the DNA of the product and how it is to behave. That includes whether and which custom checkout page layout you wanna use, whether and if you've got a custom thank you page. You can configure a next step link to use for buttons or things on a global thank you to take somebody directly to the deliverable for this product. So for example, maybe I'm using a global thank you page, but I wanna have a button that takes them to a particular course based upon which product they bought. I would simply choose the course from the dropdown, put this button on the thank you page, and it would go to the particular course matching whatever they bought. And I can also set up all the other options here. Now, whichever options I've set up and saved, when I scroll to the top in the upper right corner of either Classic or Gutenberg will be the direct checkout link. You can simply copy the URL. And here's the magic. You can use this on any clickable element, either on your site or off of your site. So this means you can use it for multi-step checkout pages where you wanna throw a product to the cart from anywhere, even including inside of a lesson or a course. You can use it on your sales pages, buttons and links, a Facebook ad or a Facebook group, Instagram, blog posts, emails, and more. The next option is called our simple product bump. And this uses, again, the short code, or you can use the Elementor widget to allow you to add any number of simple products to either a step or a checkout page. So instead of just throwing them blindly to the cart, you're giving a visual clue about what's happening. In this case, the checkbox, when checked, the product is in the cart. When it unchecks, it's removed from the cart. And again, simple to set up. In this case, what you wanna do is create a checkout page and you can make sure that it's configured to use one of the launch flows layouts. So in this case, we would use, let's say launch flows full width. Then all we need to do is get the ID of a product that we wanna send. This could be a simple or a variable product. Whichever way we go, make sure that the ID represents the particular choice. So here I've got a lead magnet, which is a simple product. I'm gonna just take the ID from the post at the top, 27412. Now I can also get this by going back to the all products area, and it's a little easier to see. When I roll my mouse over, it just reveals itself. Then I'm gonna to go to the layout, and in this case, let's just start over. Let's type launch flows, and I'm gonna choose the order bump widget. I drag that in place and paste the ID of the simple product, and then it will tell me the right thing. I have a multitude of options I can configure right here. I can add a custom title if I want, so that if I wrap this thing up, I can have it inside of the border, like I had just shown you. I might go into the advanced area, and I might do a dashed border. And this is what I would do if I want this to look like a typical kind of salesy order bump. I just put these features on here and I might include a little bit of padding. So in this case, let's go here to advanced and we'll put in a little padding, uh, whatever it takes to make it look good. Maybe we'll do 5%. That could be a little too much. Let's try 2%. Okay. I can also hide various components. So if I don't want to show, for example, the image, I can just turn it off. I can do the same thing, for example, with the price. Maybe I just want to show, you know, the title of the product. Now, this is very flexible because I can have as many of these as I want. I simply would duplicate my work and then I would just choose a different product ID. So in this case, maybe I want to add this as a second option. 
And I go back here and I just click on the widget, replace the product ID. And now I've got two of them. In this case, what I'm going to do is also remove the custom title. Okay. These are very similar when we're using the variable option. So the variable product bump is the same thing, except in this case, you want to have multiple choices, but only allow the person to pick from one or the other. In the simple product bump, they can choose both of them, checking both checkboxes. In the variable option, they can only choose amongst one or the, or the other. And the way that one sets this up is simply to create a variable product. In this case, I've got one, let's say, that I'm working with here. And then each of the choices can be configured the way you want it, but the variations will have their own unique ID numbers. So if I were to use this, simply set each of them up using the ID of each individual variable choice or variation choice, 27499, 27500, and so forth. When you do this method, it's actually quite advantageous to go ahead and change the style of the checkbox. So here, if I was using a variation, I would change each of these checkboxes to a circle instead of a square. Obviously, I might eliminate the highlights as well. And in doing so, they will appear as radio buttons and will actually be, behave as radio buttons. You'll only be able to click on one or the other and it will remove the one that is no longer chosen. Let's talk about the always in checkout method. Now, this is one of my favorite methods. If you have a particular product that you know you want somebody to buy, simply create a custom checkout page with launch flows, give it a unique URL. At that point, you can just send people to that URL and the product itself will always be in that checkout. You cannot remove it. So let's set this up here. Let's take the product that we've got, borrow the ID, and let's start over from scratch where we're gonna drag in the launch flows always in checkout. We put the widget as we want to add the ID. We actually want to show it. So we're going to say it's shown. Now I can, again, adjust the styling, for example, whether I want to show the cart icon and so on and so forth. If you don't want to show any of this, just uncheck or check to hide all of them. And it will still display on the front the actual content, but it won't show any of the imagery. So in other words, it will be in the cart all the time, but it won't show any indication visually. All right. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and do a couple other options. One of the things that we would want to do is when we add the order review widget, which is similar to the cart, we want to choose to remove the rem to, to take out the remove. So let me show you what that means. Typically in our layout, we're going to use the launch flows review widget so that somebody can see what they've purchased. When you put this widget in place, be sure to go to hide remove product links or hide product remove links and uncheck it. And in doing so, that way when the products are listed as being in the cart, there won't be the little X that allows them to be removed because that would be confusing if every time they click that, the product still came back. And then finally, we've got a neat method called the instant sales page. This is a perfect opportunity for you, typically on the step before checkout, to give variations for people to choose from, but use the already existing product page. And the way this works is simple. Let's go to our products and see I have configured. Actually, let's go over here. I have configured here a product. And this is a variable product, but instead of using the individual order bumps for variables, I'm going to use an intermediary page. When I configure the product, I'm going to choose instant sales page. What this does is it eliminates all the extraneous things from the page, but then allows me if I want to add my own modifications with Elementor. You'll notice when we look at this page that it also gives me a very simple and elegant way to put multiple, uh, multiple options or multiple variations. So I can have, let's say, an array. Here I've got the choice of size and maybe I got this, the choice of color. It dynamically gives me the price and then I have a custom button that I can say anything I want on. So I would typically use this, let's say, if I said, hey, buy my new checkout example product, I would take them to this page 
where the product is configured just like we indicated, knowing where it's going to be sold from on the specific checkout. But by giving them these choices, I allow them a more flexible and interesting way to choose. It also opens up the possibility of using any of the free or paid WooCommerce modification plugins that allow me to do anything I want with the single product uh, variations, such as here, I could have color swatches or different uh, imagery for the options. The idea with launch flows is that by not hijacking the checkout flow or process, these kinds of things are really simple. And yet, we still have full control over where this product will be sent and what happens next. This is a quick review of the five best sales methods using launch flows. I suggest you play with all of them, mix and match. If you have any questions, you can ask us at help at launchflows.com, see us on the Facebook group at launchflows, or just ask us a question inside of the support area here. This is Spence, and I'll see you on the next video.